Things are bubbling up and boiling over in New York. This is a scene in Westbury, New York. You'll see the damage there. Crews trying to move these trees, the debris out of the way before they can restore power. Get this close to 200,000 people still without power in some of the areas hard at hit by Isaias. Some families say they've been trying to reach the local power company for days and days without a response. Others say communication from the power company has been frustrating all around. Yeah, folks, it is an ocean of frustrating frustration for so many people and, and about the damage or that it's been affecting millions of people, too. Not only did the storm cause damage last week, but uh, it's caused a lot of heartache, a lot of headaches for so many people. Let's bring in Griff Rogers. Griff is the president of Catastrophic Services for Crawford and, and Company, and he joins us to help us navigate through the repair process. And, you know, Griff, when it comes to things like insurance, is one of those things that you You'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And when it comes to, to, to these kind of situations, what are the best ways to document storm damage to your home and to your property? Yeah, good morning, and thanks for having me on this morning. So, uh, you know, we, we talk about ECS and, and the hurricane that we've all seen that came through last week. And really one of the things I would say the only favorable offering of a hurricane of this is that it does give everyone time to prepare to document your property. And um, uh, I would say the most important thing to document is that of your exterior home. So taking photographs of your home, uh, I would encourage everyone to take all four corners uh, as well as the interior home with photographs and video as well. Uh, in a lot, of, a lot of cases, we would recommend that you actually walk the interior home uh, uh, through video capture in every room so that you can identify what those personal belongings are, uh, just in case they get impacted by the storm itself. And another thing that's really important is making sure that you have your agent's number recorded in your phone before the event as well, so that if you need to reach out to him or her, you have that access just in case there's no internet or any power so that you can easily reach them as well. But the more you document, the much smoother the claims process mm -hmm. is going to be. So it's really, really imperative that uh, that you do that in creating that inventory of your home before the event so right. that it's uh, just beneficial in validating that loss when needed. Uh, Griff, Griff help, help me out here for a second, though. Um, let's, let's lay out a hypothetical, which I'm sure has played out time and again across parts of the Northeast. Let's say, for example, <laughs> you've got a tree that belongs in your neighbor's yard. It's in your neighbor's yard, but the tree falls over and hits your house or your car. How do you determine fault? Who's responsible? Well, and, and that's a good question. There's a lot of different scenarios that, that come into play when you're dealing with a situation such as this. But I would recommend anytime you have a situation where there's a tree that's actually located on your neighbor's yard, falls on your property, the best thing to do is just report this to your carrier and, and let them resolve that issue. I would not uh, try to. I would not recommend that, that you or anyone try to um, – establish anybody or any anyone at fault for any particular reason like i said there's a lot of scenarios that come into play here but it's really it'd really be best if just you bring your carrier into the process let them know what's happened um obviously taking photographs of the damages and, and providing them to the to the carrier will be very helpful as well but the final resolution of this claim or the resolution of the claim should be conducted by your carrier and just reporting it to the agent accordingly uh, one last question for you. Are, are there any common mistakes that, that people should avoid that could penalize them at the end of the process? Uh, no, not, nothing that comes to mind. You know, the, the thing that I would really encourage mm -hmm. everybody to do is just document, document your loss. Get ahead of it on the front end so that you can clearly uh, document all, all of your belongings, all of your property on the front end, and then after the storm occurs, you have that same documentation also to support so that there's a, there's a before and after um, uh, process so that you can clearly show your carrier the, the, the damages that you, you sustained from this event. So um, I can't stress enough to okay. everyone listening that documentation is, is the best thing. And, and all of us nowadays have smartphones. It's probably the best tool to use to capture this. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, both on the front end as well on the back end. Griff Rogers from Crawford & Company with a wealth of information. Thank you so much. It's stuff that's uh, sorely needed, obviously, at this time.